new fundraising totals are giving us insight into which Republican candidates are gaining steam and who is falling behind. Those numbers are even more important than usual since small donors will help decide whether Republican candidates can make the debate stage next month. And joining me now is a candidate who says he has already met those fundraising requirements, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Governor Christie, thanks for joining us. So your campaign reports having raised $1.7 million in the first 25 days of your presidential bid. That's more than Mike Pence, but behind not only Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, but also Nikki Haley and Tim Scott. They were in the race longer than you, we should note. But you are going to have to do a lot better than that in the next quarter. So how are you going to achieve that? Well, look, Jake, if, if we continue to raise money at the pace we've been raising it, um, we're going to do just fine. I mean, as you noted, um, Tim Scott uh, transferred a significant amount of money from his Senate campaign. Nikki Haley's been in the race, I think, since February. Uh, we essentially were raising money for three weeks. Uh, so we feel good about what we've done. There's also a super PAC that um, has been supporting uh, our, our effort, uh, which raised another $6 million dollars. Uh, on top of that. So I think we had a pretty good three weeks. I want to get your reaction to something said by the Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump, last night about the criminal charges that he's facing now and perhaps charges that might be pending. Take a listen. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it to be a great badge of honor and courage. I'm doing it for you. I'm being indicted for you. Better me than you, right? Great badge of honor and courage. Better than better me than you. What, what do you make of that? Um, he's a liar and a coward. Uh, he's not getting indicted for anyone other than because of his own conduct. Uh, there's no other of the 200 million Americans he spoke about who illegally retained classified national secrets after being asked politely, quietly, and professionally for 18 months to voluntarily turn them back over after he left the White House. There's no other of those 200 million Americans who lied to their own lawyers about where those documents were. And there's none of those other 200 million Americans who lied to the prosecutors about it and flashed around documents regarding an Iranian war plan to people who didn't have the clearance to see them. Um, look, uh, he's indicted uh, because of his outrageous conduct. Uh, and that's why he's been indicted. He now has the opportunity uh, to go to court uh, and make the government prove that case beyond a reasonable doubt. But now he says he doesn't want to have a trial until after the election in 2024. Um, I don't think he's doing that for us either. He should resolve this thing before people vote so that we know exactly who we're voting for to put behind the desk in the Oval Office. Um, when he says he's doing it for us, that's a lie. And when he do was doing all the things that he was doing with those documents, it shows exactly what a coward he is. I know you just mentioned your super PAC, and I know you're legally not allowed to coordinate with your super PAC. So you might be seeing this ad I'm about to play for the first time, but I want to play you a video that your super PAC is going to release tomorrow. Should you show up to the debate? Because if you do, your opponents will bring up the impeachments, the indictments, bring up how you lost to Joe Biden. So, Donald, you need to decide. Are you a chicken or just a loser? They're calling him a chicken or a loser. I guess he, they have to, he has to make a choice there. Uh, what's your reaction to this ad? Well, it's the first time I've seen it, but I think it's probably a pretty good question. Um, and he should show up at the debates and defend his record. The Republican Party voters who are deciding who our nominee should be um, should be able to make that decision by comparing all the candidates who qualify for the debate stage um, right next to each other, challenging each other's records, discussing each other's plans for the future of America and how they're going to beat Joe Biden. And uh, we're happy because uh, now, Jake, almost 45,000 individual donors went to ChrisChristie.com and donated that we have qualified for the debate stage. We'll be there on August 23rd and we'll be waiting for Donald Trump. But let me be candid here. You are starting to gain some ground in New Hampshire, but, but Donald Trump is still leading by about 20 points just in New Hampshire. He's up in Iowa. He's up nationally. Is it not just a fact that as of now, Donald Trump remains far and away the choice of Republican voters, even if you cannot understand why? Well, no, the, the fact is that he's ahead of the polls right now, Jake. You have 
reported that accurately. I'll fact check you. And that is a correct fact that you've put forward. But, you know, the, the good news is that no one's voting in Iowa till January 15th. No one's probably going to be voting in New Hampshire till later that month or early February. Uh, and there's a lot of campaign to go here. In fact, we haven't even had the first debate yet. As you mentioned, it's not till August 23rd. I think most people, let's say in my region of the country, are down at the Jersey Shore right now um, enjoying their summer vacation. Maybe in New Hampshire, they're at Lake Winnipesaukee. Um, they're not focused on this yet. Just you and I are um, and a few other candidates. So let's get people focused when we get here late summer, early fall. Let's engage in the lecture where we talk about, you know, some very simple issues, Jake. Um, you know, first is, you know, are you going to get the truth? Uh, do you deserve the truth as a Republican primary voter and as an American? Um, and will you get a candidate who will make the truth important? We know Donald Trump hasn't done that. And will you get someone who will deliver results on the issues that you care about? Um, you know, Donald Trump was arguing again last night about immigration. He didn't do anything to change the immigration laws and make them better or stronger for America. And he built 47 miles of new wall um, in his four years as president. You know, Jake, at that rate, he would need 110 more years as president to be able to finish the wall between the United States and Mexico. First debate, uh, as you note, now almost a month away. I want you to take a listen to what your fellow 2024 candidate, former Texas Congressman Will Hurd, had to say about those who take the debate pledge to support the eventual nominee. This is what he had to say a couple weeks ago. I can't lie to get access to a microphone. I'm not going to support uh, Donald Trump. I recognize the impact that it has on, on, on you know, my ability to get access to the debate stage, but I, I can't lie. It'll be easy to say, I'll do it, and then when it comes down, you know, change your mind, but I just can't, I can't do that. In your, I'm sorry, in Will Hurd's formulation, are you lying to make the debate stage by signing a pledge to support the nominee no matter who it is, including if it's Donald Trump? Well, I won't, see, uh, I won't see Will Hurt on the debate stage, and that's okay by me. Uh, the fact is we've got to change our party, Jake, and change our country. Um, and we had these debate pledges uh, um, eight years ago, as you'll recall, and all of us signed them. And then when we got on the debate stage and we were asked to reaffirm it, Donald Trump refused to raise his hand, the only one of 10 candidates who did. Uh, the fact is uh, he has set the president here, and uh, I will sign the debate pledge. Um, and I will take it every bit as seriously as he did in 2016. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, thanks so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Jake, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.